all grow up. We leave the fantasy world behind to go live our lives in the real world. But what happens to the fairy tale creatures we leave behind? What happens to these once loved characters when the people who cared so much about them simply forget? this forgotten old wooden bridge dwelling termite riddle troll tutorial. <laughs> Let's start off with a quick celebration for making it into the Next Space Awards Top 30! Yay! Okay, so my base makeup is going to be a little bit different than usual. To create this troll look, I am going to be using prosthetics, which is something you have never seen here on my channel, and that is because it's something I am very new to, and because of that, I'm not going to go too much into how I made these pieces. I am still learning this myself, so I don't want to steer you down the wrong path by attempting to teach you something that I am still a total newbie at. So for this look, I made a nose piece and a mouth jaw thing. <laughs> for latex pieces like mine that are lightweight and hollow, it is much easier to pre-paint them before applying. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to paint them on my face so I could show you what I'm doing, you know? So, to give them the support they need, you can fill them up with cotton balls, but if you do this, be aware that having cotton covering your mouth and in your nose piece will reduce your ability to breathe freely, so make sure you leave a clear pathway in the cotton from the nose holes to your nostrils. Okay, now let's get to tutorialing. Tutorialing? Sure, why not? <laughs> I start by applying the jaw piece first. Using a prosthetic adhesive, cover the areas where the prosthetic is going to be making contact with your face. For this piece, that means all around my mouth and around my jaw. Also put some adhesive on the prosthetic too for some extra stick. And once it's tacky, start by attaching the center of the prosthetic first and work outward. I use a palette knife to smooth out the edges as I go, instead of using my fingers just to keep them from getting all sticky, but using your paws works just fine too. Add some extra adhesive to any stubborn edges and smooth them out again before moving on to the nose. For the nose, do the same thing. Adhesive on the face and on the prosthetic, attach the center first and move outward, and you're good. To blend the edges of your prosthetic, do a few laps around the edge, coating both the prosthetic and your skin with latex. I created the nose and mouth pieces separately because I think it's generally easier to apply smaller pieces, especially for beginners. But the downside to having them as two separate pieces instead of one seamless piece is that it does leave room for things to not line up perfectly. If you have any gaps or edges that need smoothing, try using latex and tissue paper to bridge these gaps. Put some latex down first, add a single layer of toilet paper or tissues or whatever you have, and then saturate it in latex to seal it up. Add as many layers as you need until it does the job you're aiming for. I have found that using tiny bits of tissue paper is my favorite beginner trick to help you hide your problem areas, so you'll see that I use it a lot in this tutorial. <laughs> Alright, real quick. This is something I would normally cut out of a video like this, especially in a video for, say, the next Face Awards where everyone is totally amazing at makeup. <laughs> but I do think that this is important to say. It is 100% okay to mess up, especially when you're new to something. It is for sure gonna happen. <laughs> Just fix it and keep going. There is no shame in making mistakes. It's how you learn, so don't feel bad. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled tutorial. Once everything is applied and dried, it is time to create that gnarly cheek and forehead texture. This forgotten troll lives under a forgotten bridge, which has been left to decompose and decay. Termites have infested the rotting wooden bridge and the troll that lives underneath it. So to create the termite damage on our troll face, I am using cotton and latex which is a very common method that is a cheap and easy way to create gross textures, cuts, scabs, burns, all kinds of things. Put down some latex, unravel a cotton ball and form it into the shape you want, stick it on and saturate it in latex again. Easy as that. I'm using my palette knife to push the cotton into these weird little lines that termites make when they are eating something. For example, a troll. I am purposely creating a ledge here because I'm going to be adding some little termite guys to this area later and I want them to be able to sit on these ledges and in these holes. 
repeat all over your face. Now that we are looking all amazing and beautiful, it's time to move on to makeup. Once all of your adhesive and latex and everything is dry, powder it with a loose powder to remove the shine before starting with color. For this Trolls base color, I'm going to be using NYX's HD foundation in the color California Tan, which is kind of a funny name for the complexion of a bridge-dwelling troll, <laughs> but just go with it. I'm applying this foundation all over my face, neck and chest, over the prosthetics, on my ears, in my hairline, everywhere except right around the teeth sockets. I want those to stay pale and kind of gross looking, like the skin there is much thinner. Next, I use three different colors of NYX's mineral foundation sticks, one at a time. I use the stick to transfer product to this little sponge before stippling skin texture all over my face. I will also be adding in a green lipstick and a yellow eyeshadow to the stippling process to add a splash of color to the skin that matches the troll's natural environment. Using a variety of colors while stippling will add depth to the skin and will also help disguise the edges of the prosthetics. Oh, and side note, creating gross, rough looking creatures like this is a great way to start in the world of prosthetics and special effects makeup. Weird textures, prosthetics not blending properly, all of that kind of stuff that comes with learning a new craft is much more excusable and can even be passed off as intentional when it makes sense for your character. Elaborate textures are surprisingly easier to achieve than anything that is perfectly smooth, so keep that in mind if you are just starting out. After the skin is sufficiently gross, I am taking the matte deep brown eyeshadow from the Full Throttle Shadow Palette in Easy on the Eyes and sweeping that between these big, faux, burly brows that I'm building here. <laughs> the dark brown eyeshadow offsets the yellow eyeshadow that I put down earlier and makes it look like the brow bone really sticks out. I am also using this brown to hollow out my eye sockets a little bit for now, but we'll come back to that later. Then I'm using the brown from the Deep Conceal Correct and Contour Palette to add more direct detailing between the brows, and I add a few wrinkles along the bridge of the nose too. Using that same color, I start to fill in a few places around the face, like darkening up some moles and shading around the nose and teeth before getting to the termite holes. Now it's just like a coloring book. Just take that dark concealer and fill in all of the holes that we made earlier with the cotton and latex and the ones that are on the chin piece too. These holes aren't too deep, so keeping them just a few shades darker than the skin tone is good. The darker you make them, the deeper they look, so go ahead and make them as dark as you want. Then I am taking the next darkest shade in the palette and adding it halfway through the termite damage so that it's not so uniform, like it's not the same darkness all the way across. Parts of the holes are deeper, some parts are shallower, and consistency is ideal for anything that has been exposed to nature. Next, I use a slide-on lip pencil in Urban Cafe to do some more line work around the brows and nose area. After that, I just jump back to the brown concealer and brown shadow from before to create a darker contour around my nose. You'll notice that this tutorial in particular is a lot of back and forth compared to most of the other videos I do, which are usually just do this, do this, do this. But building up a whole new skin texture and face shape is something that takes a lot more eyeballing it as you go and kind of just making changes as needed. You may see something that needs more shadows or highlights or whatever, so just roll with it. Now I am adding some black eyeshadow to the deepest parts of my face, which is the inner corners of my eyes. Mix that across your lid with some brown eyeshadow. Remember, we aren't going for a look that is nice and refined, so for once, don't spend too much time blending your eyeshadows. Now I am just going to pop a highlight along the tops of the termite holes using the light yellowy color from the Conceal, Correct, and Contour palette. Okay guys, this. This is one of my fave parts of this look. One quick way to go from average human to abandoned troll who lives under a bridge is huge, fluffy, ridiculous, can't be tamed eyebrows. <laughs> to make fake eyebrows like this, I used shredded up yarn to make a pile of matted hair. And then to make this hairball into eyebrows, I just took a little chunk and pulled it gently to remove any loose hairs. And then I take some scissors to cut off the bottom so that it has a growth point that makes sense when you attach it to your face. Now working in small sections, use spirit gum to apply your fancy new eyebrows. Now the only thing really missing is our big troll teeth. 
For fun, I added a gummy color underneath the teeth using a liquid suede lippy, but that is going to be covered up, so, you know, no pressure. Although, it is pretty cool if something happens during your troll adventures and one of your teeth falls out and you're all prepared with colored gums and stuff, but anyway, onward! Like my jaw and nose, these teeth are also latex prosthetics that I made at the same time as the jaw piece so that I could make sure each tooth would fit in its individual socket. To color the teeth, I start by going over the whole tooth with NYX's Jumbo Pencil in Milk as a base. If you don't do this, eyeshadow won't stick to the latex, so make sure you base it with some kind of primer or jumbo eye pencil or something like that. Then I cover the whole thing in yellow eyeshadow. I am using NYX's Primal Color in Hot Yellow to tint the tooth. Then I use the same deep brown mineral foundation stick that I used for texturing my skin, which is the color Coco, to color straight on the bottom half of the tooth. Then rub the foundation over the latex with your fingers to blend it and dirty up the yellow color. We are going for a nasty tooth root here, and this foundation picks up that texture in a super cool way. I just love the way it looks. Um, and then just brush it over with a brown eyeshadow to spread the look of loose dirt on the tooth. Now to attach the tooth to the jaw, just put some adhesive both into the tooth socket and along the base of the tooth. Once it's tacky, pop it in there and hold it in place until it dries. Repeat for all your other teeth, all four of them. Trolls aren't known for their beautiful teeth, okay? <laughs> Finally, apply a brown lip gloss to add a sheen to the areas that would be wet if this were a real troll mouth. <laughs> around the teeth, around the nostrils, and all back up in that area between the mouth and the nose. I guess like the upper lip area if this guy had lips. <laughs> okay, so if you're going to be doing contacts and eyeliner, probably should have done that before putting these giant teeth in, but whoops, <laughs> it still works. Put in some brown contacts and add NYX's Wonder Pencil to the waterline. The final component of this troll's makeup is his little termite bugs that are infesting his home and his face. I made these cute little guys using latex for lightweight flexibility, foundation for coloring, and clear nail polish for the shine. Use spirit gum to attach them to wherever you want on your face. I put them in and around the holes, all up in the gums, and around the teeth, because that's just pretty gross, and it seems appropriate for this look. <laughs> this wig. Oh man, this wig. <laughs> this wig originally looked like this, but if you give a wig to a cosplayer, this kind of thing is inevitable. <laughs> To style it, it's just a whole bunch of teasing and gluing some clumps of that eyebrow hair in between some of the wefts to make it look like matted troll hair. Alright, this really could have been the end of the video, but something just wasn't right. I start to go a little crazy here, adding all kinds of things like darker eyeliner, darkening the nose, anything to add more contrast because I couldn't for the life of me figure out what was wrong with this troll guy. He looks so cool in person, but so flat on camera. So after a quick pep talk from my technical consultant, it dawned on me. It's not the makeup. It's the lighting. I filmed this tutorial using my ring light, aka a beauty light, whose main job is to fill in shadows and make you look all pretty. But this troll isn't supposed to be pretty, so it's actually doing the opposite of what I needed. So let's light this more appropriately and see this badass troll in all of his contrasty glory. We're done! That's it for this fairy tale round of the NYX Face Awards 2016! If you enjoyed this weird little creature and don't want my Face Awards journey to end, please, please, please head over to vote for me on NYXFaceAwards.com. You can keep me in this competition by voting three times a day for the entire voting period. It would make me so happy if you could go there and vote for me. So as a little extra for you, I will be posting bonus content, many tutorials, and behind the scenes footage throughout the entire voting period on Instagram and Twitter. So follow me there if you want to see more from this forgotten troll look. Thanks so much for watching and supporting me in my Face Awards adventure. I will see you next time. Bye!